All right, testing one, two, testing one, two. Alright guys, welcome back to yet another stream. I know there's probably zero people out there. Uh, as of now, I just started, <clears throat> but I figured I'd go ahead and just kick things off a couple minutes early. Uh, so yeah, welcome back. Uh, remember, this is October. Uh, I am doing uh, lots of horror-themed stuff this month, and uh, I'm raising the amount of streams I do just for this month. So we're streaming uh, live and early Tuesday mornings. Uh, so it's about Tuesday, uh, October 10th as we're recording this, and it's 8.30 in the morning. Um, so yeah, we're going to run through the second half of Splatterhouse. I did the first half last week. Uh, I don't predict us having too many issues with this. I think I'll be able to get through the rest without too much of a problem. And um, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Let me hit B. I'm going to talk about a few things real quick before I uh, jump into the game. Uh, Red Dwarf, good morning, man. How are you doing this morning? And uh, I saw Carl Jr. 17 was out there, said, hey, Austin. I wasn't even at the computer, and I came back to that. So, hey, Carl, if you're still out there. Um, but, yeah, I wanted to run a couple things by you guys first. Uh, for anyone tuning in on the archive, you know, for those of you guys that might only tune in for five or ten minutes, I wanted to uh, talk about a couple of things before I jump in here. But first off, as usual, I'd like to thank my current Patreon backers. So, uh, no new backers as of 10-3-2017. Um, but all you folks on this list right here, thank you so much for your continued support. Uh, even if you're not backing on Patreon, thank you for watching. You know, if you guys didn't watch, I wouldn't be doing this. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoy the content. And, uh, also I'm going to flash by those super chatters. Uh, usually we get some super chats on Thursday nights when I stream. Uh, it's basically direct donations via a YouTube's streaming system. Um, and they call them super chats. So thank you guys, um, for super chatting, uh, much much appreciated. Hey, Kurt Urbane. Awesome. Hey, glad you enjoyed that video. Thank you very much. So, yeah, um, what I wanted to talk about, I actually received a comment the other day on my Devil May Cry stream and, um, you know, receiving some feedback about, you know, the quality of the streams. And uh, um, I got the impression, well, I should just say that. Um, I totally understand if you guys out there watching don't watch these streams. Uh, the purpose of these live streams is to give uh, people here uh, a different way to hang out, enjoy some gaming content, you know, ask me questions, just hang out with me. Um, and it's it's meant to be experienced in a live scenario. Um, basically, one of the one of the complaints was that I I'm not focusing enough on the you know gameplay mechanics, like talking about the mechanics and talking my way through the game and stuff like that. And the thing is, these live streams are really about interacting with you guys. Um, it's not about the games as much as it is talking and hanging out with you guys. Red Dwarf in the chat, Kurt Urbane, Carl Jr., you guys that are out there. It's about hanging out with you guys, and so. Well, I might not focus on the games as uh, as strict and as hardcore as I do in my dedicated Let's Plays. Uh, there might still be some interesting chatter here. Um, you know, some interesting questions are always thrown out to me during these live streams. And it's just, it's a fun time. Now, I totally understand if no one wants to watch them on the archive. I don't expect people to watch these on the archive. But they're there for people that say caught part of the stream, had to go to bed. But they still wanted to watch the rest and see what sort of chat came up. 
uh, through through the rest of that. Um, also, some people still enjoy watching the archives anyway. I don't know why, um, but I can't fault them. If you watch these and you enjoy the archives, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Uh, I'm glad you guys enjoy it regardless. For those of you guys that want the more dedicated content where I'm just gung-ho about gameplay mechanics and talking my way through the game, that's what my dedicated Let's Plays are for. And they're posted every single Sunday. That is my schedule. So ignore the live streams. Uh, ignore the live stream archives if it's not your thing. I don't blame you. I totally understand. Um, the live streams won't be changing, though. I'm not going to be changing the format. I'm not going to make a concerted effort to be focusing more on talking my way through the games. At least not for these games like Splatterhouse here, where it's it's going to take eight hours to get through the game. Uh, my Devil May Cry stream was almost five hours long. Pretty good run overall. Um, it's kind of hard to just talk your way through for five hours straight. For one, it's draining. Uh, two, I'm trying to focus on getting through these games as fast as possible. So I'm not sitting here for eight hours in a single session. On my day off, I could be doing better things with my life, if you know what I mean. I hope you guys understand. And basically, it's about hanging out with the people live on the spot. Um, and if it comes off as, you know... Um, a guy online hanging out with his friends. That's basically what it is. I like hanging out with you guys and talking with you. And that's, that's, that's the reason someone like myself would live stream. Um, so yeah, for those of you guys that, um, you know, are kind of fed up with the live streams uh, on the archives, just ignore them. Remember, I post Let's Plays four to five times a month, depending on how many weeks there are in a month and, uh, how many Sundays there are in a month, I should say. And, um... Check out my Sunday content. I just posted a Super Castlevania 4 Let's Play uh, two days ago. It was a hard mode run. It was a very difficult run that I had to, you know, spend a lot of time practicing for. And I think uh, a lot of you guys out there would probably enjoy that. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. It's more focused. It's me talking about the mechanics and the game all the way through. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to clear that up um, before jumping into this. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into this. <sighs> I mean, I really feel like, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate feedback uh, and I want your feedback. If you guys have any feedback, you know, feel free to toss it my way. Toss it on a video, shoot me a message, whatever. Uh, I am open to all feedback, but there's there's some things I'm still not willing to change. Um, and the thing about the live streams is they, they are what they are. And, you know, it's it's not the main focus on my channel the only reason i'm doing extra streams during october is because there's so many games i want to play in october and it's my favorite time of the year to do videos for you guys and it's a way for me to get some extra content out and to reach out to some of you folks like red dwarf is over there in the uk he's five or six hours ahead of me he doesn't normally get to check my thursday night streams uh so this is great for someone like him who who can't normally hang out on stream so um, but at the end of October or after October is over, we're done with live streams on Tuesdays. It's going to go back to just Let's Plays on Sundays and then live streams on Thursdays. And if anyone wants to see me stream at other times, there's Twitch. Um, but honestly, Twitch isn't as fun. I like I like the YouTube stream. I like... Uh, I mean, Twitch is great, but it's a different vibe. I like the YouTube stream because it is a lot of times focused more around the games. And a lot of times it's also focused more around the actual chatter between you guys, which is awesome. We get much more uh, involved conversations here on YouTube, whereas there's a lot more lurking and so forth going on um, and just random conversations over at Twitch. So, but yeah, this is, uh, again, this is Splatterhouse uh, 2016. And um, that gray box in the uh, top portion of the screen, don't mind that. That is just, uh, there, I just filled it up a little bit. That's the, the chat box. We got some chat messages already. But uh, unfortunately, they were a little bit higher up on the screen, so. Uh, oh, man. Yes, yeah, so I guess it's been about a week since we last played this. <laughs> it's better than 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Yeah, Red Dwarf, I completely understand. I, I do not blame you at all. There are, there are so many live streams I miss because they stream at times when uh, I'm asleep. You know, I'm a night owl because of my uh, my job. I'm forced to be a night owl, and thus, you know, when a lot of people stream in the afternoon, I miss it because I'm I'm asleep. I am knocked out. Handy. 
Yeah, so this is probably one of the better levels in the game. This is um, the carnival stage, and uh, some really cool things that happen here. The gameplay, you know, like I said last week, it gets repetitive. It doesn't really change up all that much uh, at this place. But uh, the environment itself is pretty cool. I definitely like that. And this thing's going to close on us, just like that, and enemies are going to pop out. These are some clown enemies, and uh, they definitely take more hits than uh, other enemies have up to up to this point in the game. So if you see something like a two x four, or you see a butcher's knife or something like that, it's definitely good to pick those up and use it on these guys just to make life easier. Two to six a.m. is perfect when you work <laughs> night shift. Exactly. Yeah, I work, uh, I, I get off work at 7 a.m. each morning, um, and, uh, you know, one of the main reasons I start my live streams on Thursdays at 9 p.m. is that, you know, I still have to set my alarm to wake up to stream for you guys on Thursday nights, you know, I try to get up around 7.30 to give myself an hour to prep and to eat food in the shower and stuff like that, basically just to get ready, um, you know, if it was up to me, I would actually start much later, but the fact is, I know not many people will tune in if I start streaming at midnight my time. Um, so 9 p.m. is a pretty good sweet spot. I used to do 8 p.m. on Thursday nights uh, over on Twitch, but uh, I really started having a hard time waking up, you know, at 6.30 in order to get prepped for an 8 o'clock show. So this is one of those parts that just really feels like it can go on forever. It's just non-stop. But that's what our special attacks are for. Remember that you can hold down attacks in this game. Uh, which is really important, the heavy attacks. So this attack in particular, where you've got this like shockwave that goes across the ground, is really, really powerful. And uh, it'll hit multiple enemies. I probably should have mentioned that this game is not family friendly, friendly in the slightest. Uh, last time I streamed this game, I did make an announcement at the beginning. Uh, but uh, I totally forgot to do that this week. If you're just stumbling upon this game, uh, just to FYI, in case you haven't realized, it's not family friendly. Probably want to turn this off if you got your kids around. <laughs> hey, Gerald, how's it going? So yeah, lots of cursing in this game, lots of blood and guts, lots of, uh, yeah, lots of stuff. Okay, so we're going to grab these guys and we're going to throw them against these spikes. Actually, I'm going to use this attack, get some health back first. There we go, there's one. Looks like there's a baseball bat in there. There's another. You notice that, like, you don't really have to be too accurate when you're throwing enemies against these spikes. Enemies almost just sort of get sucked into the spikes. I know, super realistic, right? And in case you missed out on last week, 
Uh, you've got quick time events. Enemies will turn red, and you can press the B button, which is basically the throw button or the grapple button. And um, and uh, when enemies have this red aura around them, like this guy, he's you know got a red outline. Then you can press B or the grapple button and start your quick time events. And if you do it right, if you follow the commands on screen, uh, it'll be an instant kill. Big guys like that uh, that guy I just took out, sometimes they'll drop weapons or they'll drop their head. And you can use them as uh, weapons. So Rick's girlfriend pops up here, but it's not really his girlfriend. It's uh, like a doppelganger. And uh, it'll actually lead us into the Hall of Mirrors later on, I believe. And uh, a boss fight occurs that's based on uh, an enemy from the first Splatterhouse, or a series of enemies from the first Splatterhouse. No, it won't be family friendly at all. <laughs> Without the blood. <laughs> I don't even think you can turn the blood off. I don't I don't think it's possible. I'm actually kind of curious now. Yeah. Oh look at that, we can turn the brightness up a little bit. Sure, why not? Yeah, turn that brightness back down, actually. The thing about this version of the game is the contrast is super high. Maybe I should turn the brightness down even more. Because this version is just insanely bright. Oh, that's actually better. I think I had the brightness high from back when I was playing on my old CRT. Uh, so the first time I ever played this game, I was still using my Sony Trinitron. It was a 25 inch CRT from 2001. And uh, this game played in letterbox. It was, uh, you know, a low resolution, wasn't even HD resolutions. Uh, and so the colors might have looked different. I might have needed to raise the brightness back then. Uh, and since I'm on the same 360 and the save install, same install, um, that might be why the brightness settings were where they are. But lowering them a little bit, it seems like it's helped. It's, it doesn't feel like the contrast is as high now. Ah, this guy again. He could be a pain. <laughs> because now that's art. Also, when you're at this guy, like the camera messes up sometimes. It's it's weird.
Yeah, the cup. Yeah, it really does pop in this one. And I, I feel like when you raise the brightness in the game, it's not actually raising the brightness. It's like boosting the contrast and saturation, which isn't the same as just raising brightness. But that's really what it feels like when you quote unquote raise the brightness in this game. It All right, it's another series of uh, enemies. This is a really cool looking section. When you dismember their heads and their arms, a lot of times you can you can pick them up and use them as weapons afterwards. Kind of like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't always happen, but when it does, um, dismembered body parts for some reason are pretty much the strongest weapons in the game. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but it is a thing. I'm trying to save my uh, my super meter for uh, the upcoming enemies. There's going to be some bigger dudes, and when you got some bigger guys, uh, a lot of times it's good just to use your super meter. This guy right here. So that was a quick kill. I used two super attacks there. There's a couple of different super attacks you can you can activate or purchase and then activate once you purchase them. And one of them is holding L then pressing X. Shadowgate playthrough. Um I I hope to do uninvited someday. It's not gonna be anytime soon. Uh, maybe next year. Because uh, the thing about Uninvited is I actually haven't yes. beaten that game since the 90s. And um, I had to rely on a walkthrough, too, when I beat it back then. So it's going to be one of those games I'm going to have to research and follow a walkthrough in order to get through. I'm gonna drop this. Yeah, I definitely, uh... I definitely enjoyed Shadowgate more. Uh, which is one reason I haven't really bothered to revisit the Uninvited. Uh, same with Deja Vu. I, you know, I, part of the appeal of Shadowgate to me is the horror, uh, vibe. Uh, and Deja Vu is pretty cool, but it's not really a scary game. But I definitely want to do Deja Vu eventually as well. I did beat that in the 90s, just like with Shadowgate. But again, like Uninvited, I had to rely on a walkthrough. Yeah, so I have a couple more Let's Plays lined up for October. Um, there's going to be another Castlevania Let's Play. Um, I'm not going to surprise which one it is, although if you follow me on Facebook or Twitter, uh, I posted a hint the other day. 
<laughs> the trunk bomb in deja vu. <laughs> uh, and then I might also do a particular Master System game. And, um, but yeah, another Castlevania Let's Play potentially, and then another game for a different system that might be like Castlevania. And then I got to figure out if there's another Sunday after that in October. <laughs> I'm kind of handling some of my Let's Plays one week at a time. Which is not how I like to do it, but that's just how it works out sometimes. Boy, Ricky. A new enemy type. There's going to be another new enemy type introduced shortly as well. And he's going to be a bigger enemy that takes more hits. These guys will lunge forward at you. Sort of Liu Kang style from Mortal Kombat. They just like wiggle their feet at you. <laughs> and their hands, I suppose. Oh, I missed completely.
Uh, Red Dwarf, it was not. No, it was directly from my Super Nintendo via RGB going into my upscaler. All right, here's the other new enemy type. What is that? The SNE has many though. It's a pretty nice little thing. I I really enjoy it. I'm really happy with the quality of it. You know, you don't really feel like you're using an emulated, you know, you don't feel like you're using an emulator basically. It's pretty cool. Be using my charge attack more often. It's a really good attack. And this is pretty disgusting. Oops. Red Dwarf, I think you'll be able to get one later in the year if you haven't gotten one already. Um, you know, Nintendo's saying they're they're trying to manufacture a whole lot more, and they're going to continue to run them through parts of 2018. You know, it's not going to be a you know a holiday limited thing. I mean, reports basically show there were more for the launch of it than there were, like, all of, you know, the NES Classics available period last year, so. So, yeah, just be patient. I think you'll be able to get one. Don't pay scalper prices. And that goes to anyone else out there watching. Like, I, I've watched, I've read people on forums saying, like, Oh, you can get them for $145 right now on eBay. It's like, guys, come on, seriously. Have some freaking patience. It's, it's like, it's been out for 10 days. Like, and you're already looking at paying scalper prices. This is why the scalpers win. It's because you guys don't have any patience. A lot of people have distrust for Nintendo. Uh, they they say like, oh, well, they say they're gonna make more. I highly doubt they're gonna make more. It's like, come on, give the company the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Exactly, Red Dwarf. That's that's the proper attitude to have. Alright, Chainsaw is the only choice here. There's a shotgun, there is also something else. The Chainsaw is the best weapon. Hands down. If you see the Chainsaw, pick up the Chainsaw. It lasts a long time, but kills pretty much everything in one hit. Um, more every, every normal enemy in one hit. Bigger enemies always take more than one hit. Also, let's see what our upgrades are at right now. I got ten thousand dollars right now. Increase the radius of the splatter siphon. Sure, let's blow all our money on that. 
So Splatter Siphon is the move you do by holding the left trigger and then pressing B. And it basically sucks blood out of enemies and it, uh, you regain your health with it. It's a very, very important move. Oh, look at that, another chainsaw. And looks like we got another chainsaw. I'm switching up because the ammo is limited. So even though we've spent, we basically spent 10,000 of our blood accumulation on that one ability, we're already at the 3,600 again after going back down to zero. So the blood accumulation starts to really build up later on in the game, especially when you've got weapons like this, like the chainsaw. Yeah, I'd hardly call, uh, you know, selling a few consoles at scalper prices is getting rich. Yeah, they've made a little bit of money, but they're far from rich. In the end, they're just dicks. Yeah, you want to get rich, go make a product that's going to benefit humanity and sell it to someone for... Sell it to a company that's going to want to buy it off you for crap tons of money. That's how you get rich. Buying NES Classic Editions and marking them off on eBay doesn't make you rich. It's a very short-term thing. Rick, he's, he's hurting me. Why did you let him take me? 
<laughs> Glad I don't want to be rich. So in this part, there's a limited time. You need to go through and smash your way through the right mirrors. Otherwise, you end up having to fight that doppelganger. Go back, Rick. Save yourself. Interesting concept. Well, that's one way to do it. No, it looks like we got some, some glitched uh, characters. One of them was like floating in the air. So you can see the Hall of Mirrors already. And that's basically gonna eventually lead to our boss fight. Well, we took a wrong which is probably right here. Let's double back. We all have our demons, Rick. It's time to face yours. But where are we? The silver side of the mirror. It's... it's so cold. <laughs> Indeed it is, man. Indeed it is. <laughs> Yeah, 
Uh, no, there won't be. And, you know, I don't like saying that with any sort of affirmation, but this game just bombs. It absolutely bombed hard. Um, I don't think we're going to ever see a Splatterhouse again unless someone comes to Namco and is like, Hey, we'll pay you so we can make a Splatterhouse game. That'll probably be the only way it, it'll happen. That or unless Namco just does like a retro revival and, you know, actually makes a retro style Splatterhouse game. I could see that potentially doing okay. But I still don't think it's going to happen. Splatterhouse has always been uh, a niche product. There's a whole shitload of seven years bad luck coming your Pretty much all of them were, you know, just they kind of flew under the radar for most gamers. Different times, different you know, even the Genesis ones, they're not common games. Like the tumblers in a combination lock. The ritual decrees that blood be let in the shadow of each eclipse. The blood of a virgin? <laughs> Hardly, Rick. Hardly. Making good progress. That was a little less than an hour. Hey, Actually, a little less than 45 go. minutes. Thought maybe we could have a little you and me time. Yeah, hey, there's this little restaurant down by the river. It's nothing fancy, but... Sounds like a plan, Professor. Yeah, I sure hope so. Phase Nine The Ruined Heart. From the Journal of Dr. Henry West. Yeah. Arkham, 1756. This bond, I think, for different reasons than... Four years ago that I first tapped ashore at Boston Harbor. I mean, I wouldn't even say, like, the originals really bombed, per se. They just weren't super popular. They didn't sell a ton of copies, and they remained kind of like niche titles. This bond, because it just got tore apart in the, uh... The mainstream gaming press. Like, I think... Was it, like, IGN or someone gave it, like, a 3 out of 10? God willing. Nothing ever gets three out of ten. I mean, it's it was really I leave my they really to tore the it apart. You know, and, and has your game is just not even going to survive if it's in getting ratings like that across the internet. Alright, this could be a, a tough fight, because I'm out of my, uh, my special ability. There we go, we've got one bar. One bar is good, at the very least, because, you know, you have a safety net. Because you can use your, uh... Splatter, whatever, attack that sucks blood out of enemies. Like right now. dead. Oh, uh, yeah, I used to like a lot of gaming sites, and now I don't. <laughs> but I think a part of that is just, like, how a lot of these mainstream game news sites have just, they've changed. You know, they're not the same sites they were when I used to, I used to go to them. Like GameSpot, for instance, you know, I used to go there 20 years ago, and, uh, 
and I still check it out now, but I kind of just roll my eyes at a ton of the articles there, and I don't even bother with the reviews anymore. You know, I might check a score, just out of curiosity, but, nah. as a place of healing stand as a memorial to her beauty and grace. L'amour triomphe de l'amour. That's not good. Alright, we can finish him off. Nice. You know, like my favorite reviews now of, of games it's not it's not mainstream sites anymore I, I you know it's youtubers it's people like me that really play the games you know and I can sort of I can sort of uh, sniff out a BS review from a mile away you know when I just hear people talking about how they play the games and I just sit there and I'm watching the review and I'm just like yeah I can't trust this guy's opinion just based on like what I'm seeing here how he's playing because I know how I play, and I know what I enjoy. So that's actually kind of nice, in a, in a way. But I did like going to just, you know, a, a single site and getting, you know, respectable reviews on a consistent basis, and I, I feel like... I don't know. We almost don't get that anymore. Not to the same consistency as we had, you know, 15, 20 years ago. It is interesting in going back and reading, like, old magazines, for instance, like, you know, before, like, you know, online review sites took off. And you, you listen, like you read what these guys were talking about, and it really sounded like these magazines, basically these, these mainstream review outlets were run by gamers and, you know, they breathed and ate and slept gaming, and it was different. I guess there was just a little more consistency back in the day. Not to say they were- it was- it was perfect, but... But it is great, you know, I'm experienced- well experienced enough now to just, you know, just form my own opinion just by watching videos or something like that, and... Taking notes of the quote-unquote faults. You know, there are some games that you don't- you can't really experience fully without playing. There are some games you can just look at them and be like, okay, that looks really good. But there's some elements like gameplay, like controller responsiveness, things like that. Like, if a game can look great in video, but if it's got a three-second delay on all your inputs, you're not going to find out until you play it, and, uh... But for the most part, I, you know, you could look at a game in video form and uh, maybe have a little bit of commentary on top to get some other details, but a lot of times a video is enough if you're really in tune with your, your tastes. Oh hey, I'll pick that up. Boy, 
so these bigger guys have the this like aura attack where when you do a certain amount of damage this this aura appears around them and uh, it'll it'll do a little bit of damage and knock you back oh he just hit the other guy huh I've never seen that happen before <laughs> oh man the mask is just hilarious. Yeah, see, there he goes. He just did it. Yeah, we didn't get uh, Games Master over here. We actually didn't really get any gaming TV shows uh, over here. Like, I mean, there was one on, like, Nickelodeon, like, in the late 80s and early 90s. Um, but aside from that, I can't think of really any other gaming shows over here until, like, the late 90s or early 2000s when G4 became a thing. It was a gaming television station, and it didn't do very well, apparently. It eventually went under, which is sad. She shall sleep enough for the both of us. I must go to work. He just disappeared. Okay. From the journal of Dr. Henry West, Georgia, 1864. Almost a century has passed since I began my search. I've seen wars, famine, empires rise and fall. So much suffering. Yeah, I. Land the thing is, I don't know if like a, a gaming show on TV would do well because. I mean, it's TV. I think a lot of us that are really into that stuff have just moved on to the internet for our, uh, you know, our television watching, at least when it comes to gaming stuff. I don't even have a cable TV subscription. I just use, uh, you know, my internet and YouTube and uh, Netflix. And, you know, all my gaming stuff is just, I, I watch through YouTube for the most part. I used to go to sites like Game Trailers, which was pretty cool, but they shut down a few years ago, unfortunately. I, I missed that site. There were some good reviewers there. Some smaller enemies, please. Yes, Oh, 
<laughs> the propaganda box. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about, you know, a lot of mainstream television. I, I'm not a fan of the mainstream news outlets at all. I have to, I cringe every time I go to my mom's house because, you know, she's sitting there watching the Fox 5 o'clock news or whatever, like, every night. For when you got the political pop propaganda, but then it's all like, so-and-so got shot today, so-and-so's place got robbed today, you're going to get cancer by eating this, and duh, duh, blah, blah, negativity, negativity, negativity. It's just like, oh my god, how do you put up with this? And it's like, you watch this after you get home from a long day's worth of work, this is your way of relaxing. And it's, you know, I'm not trying to give my mom a hard time in particular, but I'm just using her as an example. And, and a lot of people do this. Television is still relatively popular. You know, people are cutting the cord to go to just straight internet, but... Um... It's not happening on as grand of a scale as I think some of us would like. I mean, I think that's that's the great thing about the internet uh, and streaming media on the internet is that, you know, you can choose what you want to watch. And generally, you know, you can choose what you want to watch on television as well, but usually choosing what you want to watch involves turning it off completely. When it comes to, like, mainstream news outlets in particular. These guys have this, like, it's, it's like they're on fire or something, or made of, I don't know, some weird material. And if you try to just punch them directly, um, you won't do a hit, and you'll end up hurting yourself. It's kind of a weird mechanic. Kind of annoying. Ah, come on. This is so annoying. They always do the same thing, too. They just grab you and it just slows things down. Ooh, that's nice. Increase the reach of the Splatter Slash. That's one of my most used special abilities. Because it does so much damage, it'll kill most small enemies in one hit. Oh my, you see, look at that. It's just so fucking annoying, man. I guess it's okay to curse in a game that drops the F-bomb every five seconds. Let's see, there it is again. 
You know, in order to get out of it, you've really got to jiggle the analog stick really fast, which is annoying. It's like I actually have to take my hand off the control, put my... Like, take my right thumb and jiggle it back and forth really quickly, which is completely unnatural. There's definitely some, like, I like this game a lot, but there's a lot of things I also don't like about the game. So just some really annoying things. That, you know, if you're just gonna sit and play it for a little while, yeah, you might not, you might not... You might not find it to be a big deal, but, you know, when you're trying to, like, have a good four-hour session on it, it starts to wear thin on you. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Uh, yeah, on YouTube I try not to curse Red Dwarf, but in a game like this I figured it doesn't matter that much. Um, since it's gonna be cursing for me already. Most of the games I play are usually somewhat family-friendly. You know, I do play some violent games, you know, but the old-school violent games I play are pretty tame compared to, you know, a lot of this modern stuff here, like Splatterhouse. I mean, this one isn't just violent, but it's also vulgar. And that's the big- that's sort of the big thing. So you can't really punch these guys at all. You gotta do your charge up heavy attack. But yeah, as far as me cursing, I actually curse way more often than I actually want to over at Twitch. <laughs> So when I get really pissed off at a game over there, oh man, it's bad. I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> You're for forever cursing at your TV while playing video games. Yeah, I don't ever uh, talk when I play video games by myself. Uh, you know, so I'm... Well, for the most part. 
There are, there is the rare, rare scenario where I might drop an F-bomb if something really bad happens, but for the most part, I'm dead silent when I'm just here by myself playing games. I'm not the kind of person that's just like constantly... I, I know people that sit there and as they play, they're just like talking to their television. And, uh... That is not me. I keep her restrained for her own benefit. In rare moments, she is herself and begs that I set her free. It is a ruse, as I have already learned to my cost. Yet these fleeting instances give me cause for hope. We're close, my love, so close. I must go. She is hungry. Two by four. Lenora slipped her chains once more last night. I found her at dawn, <laughs> on the outskirts of Arkham, her face bloody. Yeah, the lost levels is tough. I mean, I think I threw the controller playing that too. And, this time, and I I definitely threw controllers a lot back in the day. I mean, I still do now. I try not to throw the expensive controllers, you know, like my Xbox One controller. But I have I have actually broken several controllers on stream. I mm, I probably shouldn't even talk about this because I, I think people will never want to watch me again if I tell you some of the things I've done on stream, not on YouTube the YouTube stream but on the Twitch stream. <laughs> I I may or may not have actually physically broken consoles. <laughs> See, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Uh, So eventually these bones are going to raise up, and then we're going to have to destroy them. Roll. Lost Levels, uh, itself, I don't think is really that bad. It's the original Famicom release of Super Mario 2 that is, uh, pretty brutal. With Super Ghouls and Ghosts, uh, I guess I can spoil it. That's gonna be next week's Let's Play. So if you guys have trouble with that game, uh, you'll get to see me run through it without... I, I think I actually managed a one credit clear on it. <laughs> Rage uninstalled. That's the first time I've heard someone doing that. That's funny. <laughs> 
God, I just, I got so pissed off in the game, I just uninstalled it. <laughs> Dude, that's hardcore. I'm gonna do that next time I get pissed off in my game. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna try to play Dark Souls for the first time sometime soon. People on my streams have been trying to get me to play it for a long time. They say it's right up my alley in terms of uh, difficulty. I just realized I have no health. Yeah, I've, I've done Let's Plays on both those games, Mark. Yeah, a Vampire's Kiss actually to me is uh, pretty easy. Um, but I've been playing it a long time, so... Yeah, I actually did a live stream of Castlevania 4 and Dracula X for Super Nintendo. AKA Vampire's Kiss, and uh, I just plowed right through it. I'll eventually do a re record of that Let's Play. Um, you know, the last time I Let's Played that game uh, was in 2013, so my video quality is way worse back then. So anything I did pre 2016, I'm gonna go back and redo eventually. And so, uh,. Yeah, Dracula XX, aka Vampire's Kiss, will be one of them. The Castlevania games are kind of like... I don't know, I, I feel like they're, they feel like they're a lot harder than they really are. And once you figure out the tricks, they're really not that difficult. Um, I mean, you can say that about a lot of difficult games. But it just all, all depends on your experience and your knowledge with with the game or about the game. And Dracula X is one of those examples where, you know, once you know what to do, you can just tear right through it. There's not a whole lot of randomization in that game. Not a whole lot, not a whole lot of randomized elements. And that's what makes games like Super Ghouls and Ghosts tough is there is a lot of randomized elements. And that's why the Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts series is usually seen as being pretty tough. Of course, I'm not sure if people realize that's one of the core reasons why they're tough. There's a lot of randomized elements in those games. Six o'clock. Too exhausted to sleep. The sun rises. Today, yeah, yeah, well that Dracula fight is easy. Uh, it's the endurance part that gets to everyone. Um, it's a long fight. You just have to you have to be really patient. And something to keep in mind in Dracula X is on the final boss fight, not just on the final boss fight, but when you duck in that game, if you get hit, you don't get knocked back. So if you think you're going to get hit on that final boss fight, you need to make sure you're ducking when you get hit, and then you won't get knocked into the pit. Yeah, it's it's my least favorite final battle in a Castlevania game as well. Uh, well, that's not entirely true. I, I can't say I'm a fan of the Game Boy final boss fights. They're just uh, not very well designed for the uh, the small screen space. I've got Let's Plays on those as well. Um, like Castlevania Adventure and Adventure 2 Belmont's Revenge or whatever. But as far as the other ones, yeah, Dracula X as my least, you know, Dracula X Super Nintendo as my least favorite final boss fight. I don't actually mind the fight itself. It's just that when you die, you, it, 
it's like a five to ten minute boss Phase fight. 10, <laughs> it's, 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 the setup just makes it way too long, and that's just it's boring to me. I reached Arca at nightfall. As my horse Providence crested the west ridge, I witnessed a chilling scene, and the purpose of this fool's errand became clear. Yeah, Ghosts and Goblins has, you know, and Ghouls and Ghosts, and Super Ghouls and Ghosts, pretty much all of them, that entire series has a lot of randomized elements. You know, like the zombies popping out of the ground, they're random. Um, later on in the game, the little tiny little petite gargoyle guys that just randomly appear out of nowhere, they're kind of random in a lot of cases. Um... The uh, big brute guys with the hearts on their their sleeves, uh, they kind of walk back and forth at a random interval. So it's lots of little uh, randomized elements like that that makes uh, the Ghosts and Goblin games very unpredictable and difficult to play effectively. But you can get a handle on them and screaming reached my ears, and I grimly observed and get good at them. Have not entirely abandoned their pagan roots. A quickly man will revert to superstition. So this stage basically has us just rushing through. Yes! You want to take out these blue guys because they can just slice off your limbs instantly. Which makes it hard to deal with the other enemies. Yeah, I, I like Dracula X on Super Nintendo a lot. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, the thing for me is the Castlevania series is so good as a whole that it's not my favorite, but I still like it a lot. And, you know, I especially like the game leading up to Dracula. Gotcha, bitch. Dracula is definitely a, kind of a poor way to end things. Thank you. Nice, Red Dwarf. But do you, do you have, uh, is it the NES version or is it the, um... You actually have to control your character here, by the way. Is it the NES one or is it the arcade version? I, I, I forget if they released the arcade one on the Wii. Because I know how they, they had... Blah. Jeez, I can't talk right now. They had some of those arcade ports on the Wii, which is kind of cool. To any god that would listen. But it was not our Lord. <clears throat> I could not say what fate befell that mob. The arcade one, nice. Shouting and jeering turned to screams. Yeah, I played the arcade one through the uh, Capcom Classes collections, uh, as well as I have the Capcom Generation Volume 2 on PS1. We were playing that um, a few weeks ago on Twitch. And then I've got the uh, Capcom Arcade cabinet on Xbox One as well, which is kind of cool. 
it's uh, got a decent, uh, pretty solid emulated version of it. Yeah, so we don't really need to be fighting any of these guys unless um, something like this happens. Or there's an actual, you know, like invisible wall or something. Not an invisible wall, but like this, the mask barrier that forces us to fight. Go. They did happen. Dead. I should have saved at least one bar so I could do my um, my health recharge attack. Oh yeah, definitely do it, Red Dwarf. I've I've got an Xbox with all the arcade compilations on it, and not just arcade, but it's got a lot of other good compilations like the Mega Man Anniversary. And the Sonic Mega Collection, you know, stuff like that is also on it, which is great. But yeah, the original Xbox is probably the best system um, for arcade compilations and things like that. It's got so many of them, and they're usually the best compilations as well. They have the fastest load times, the least amount of uh, uh, slowdown and things like that, and graphical glitches and whatnot. So, you know, like Capcom Clash's collection, volumes 1 and 2, really good examples. Just gonna kill those guys to get my blood meter up. These swords always kill these dudes in one hit, so... And I definitely want a maxed out meter. I totally forgot that, uh... I should be using my, uh, my super meter on this part. And actually, do we have enough blood now to upgrade our... Oh, I need 10,000. Jeez, man. Come on. Thank you. Jeez, man. This game sometimes like not responsive. All right, hopefully that gives me enough to get my health back. Yep. There we go. It's tough when you've got two or three of these guys at once. I mean, they're tough enough as is, but when you've got multiples at the same time, it's really tough to deal with.
Before the wicker man stood a masked brute, drawn straight from the pages of some lurid penny dreadful. You know, even though I've died a couple times, we're still making some pretty good progress. I think there's only one more level after this, and then we're pretty much done. out to me. Darling, help me. Jenny, hold on. No, oh, they actually want me to jump up. I always forget about this part. To serve mankind. My reward is ruination. So be it. All that remains of my wife are memories and her wedding ring. In time, both will tarnish. Science has failed me. Humanity is a luxury I can no longer afford. I shall put my faith in older gods. I will tear down the gates of heaven to find you, Lenora, and I shall reach them on a stairway built from the stacked corpses of the good people of Arkham. And the body of her masked executioner shall fall a fine step. Taylor, sir. I hope you don't mind, but Jen and I have a date tonight, so it kind of made sense for me to. I just... understand. You wanted to protect your girlfriend in case anything happened to her. Very noble of you. And also, completely futile. Fangloe, Magla, Bulu Wagen.
sorry. Phase 11, Blood Eclipse. Wow, we're already at the end. Well, yeah, we must have played more than I thought uh, last week. <laughs> I mean, we probably still have another half an hour to 45 minutes, maybe an hour. But I was expecting this to be a four hour stream. The final eclipse is approaching. The gateway's almost open. Reality is beginning to unravel. It's time. Of course, this is probably the toughest part in the game because you have to fight, you know, the a huge amount of large enemies that are difficult to deal with, so... At least we get to start off with a full, uh, super bar. Uh, okay, so I definitely want to get to 10,000 so I can get my super bar upgraded. I'm gonna have to deal with two of these snake guys here, too. It's unfortunate <laughs> we have become adversaries. We share so much. The same interests. The same purpose. The same woman. <laughs> What's up, Ronnie? How are you doing? Crap, you can actually fall down. <sighs> oh, wonderful load times. Chillin', chillin', cool. Hey, what- I forgot, what game did you pick up the other night? Oh, it was Phase Necrovision. 11. Did Blood you keep playing eclipse. that? Like, how far did you get into it? I might have to give it another try sometime. <laughs> and load screen for house, load screen house. Yeah, I try to let the cutscenes go, Taiga. Taiga, Taiga. Taiga? I don't know. <laughs> you got through the first mission? Okay. No! Oh my god, man. Fire it back up in the near future. Okay. Well, as you play through it, let me know how it how it gets. I remember I think GGG Man did a review on it. God, I wanna say he did a review on it. I'm gonna check. Hold on. Uh Taiga. Phase 11, Blood Eclipse. Oh, he did not do Necrovision. Okay. I thought he did- I, I thought he had some older reviews and, like, I go and, and I don't see them anymore. Like, I thought he had some Oculus VR stuff, some horror stuff, and I went to go look for it and it's not there. But I was like, I know he talked about it. So, yeah, I'm sure he'll do one eventually. I mean, he's done some other obscure first-person shooters as well, like... Um... God, what's the game called? It's not Nosferatu, but it's kind of based... No, I mean, it is Nosferatu.
please let that do some damage. Thank you. Katechumen? I don't remember what that is. I probably watched it. I've watched most of his reviews, and he's got several hundred, I think. I won't yep, Kaz on the Rift. Yep, I saw that too. Young people are, but I understand. You would do anything for Jennifer, just as I have done for Lenora. What the? Come on, man. See, this is bullshit. <sighs> yeah, I think I know exactly which one you're talking about, Ronnie. Isn't that like a like an old FPS? It's almost like it's almost like Wolf 3D Engine like. Or maybe it's more like, uh... More something like Doom Engine Phase style. 11. Blood Eclipse. Yeah. Yeah, I think I remember exactly which one you're talking about. Of course, the sky is falling. Crap! Real. My... Yeah, I remember having a hard time with this part the last time I got here. Lots of stupid things like falling down the pits and things like that. And it's like, it's like one of the first times in the entire game you can actually fall to your death. That's the aggravating thing about it. Oh look, we can upgrade our ability. Thank you. Look at that, our bar is so much larger now. Wow, and we still died. Quake clone, okay. Eleven Blood Eclipse. Oh my God, it's a little late to start praying now. Let's try this again for like the fifth time. I don't even think that's ex an exaggeration. It really is a damn shame they never release this on PC. Okay, so we would, it would be fun playing this game in like 1080p, 60fps. Skip through this one, apparently. You will do anything for Jennifer, just as I have done with Nora. Yeah. 
No, no, no. It, it, I was falling down again. God, this is such garbage. <laughs> no, they they won't make a remaster. <laughs> Trust me, Red Dwarf. <laughs> Trust me. And like I, I don't like I said I don't like being negative about things like that, but I don't think you realize how badly this game bombed. So like it was it was pretty horrible. I would be willing to bet this is probably one of the worst selling Xbox like X games of the Xbox 360 generation. It just sat on shelves and sat and sat and sat. Freaking my game store, not even game store, the big box retailers, I think still have copies from launch seven years later. Actually, they probably got rid of them already, but copies were at like Best Buy for a long time. Oh yeah, not even a remaster, man. Dude, what the hell? Are you gonna... Yeah, you're supposed to fall down like that. God, this game is... Ah, getting on my nerves right now. You know, I, I wish there would be a remaster. Because I'd love to play the game that's, you know, in a properly optimized form. That would be great. When measured against one true love. You know, it's even a pretty good looking game. Just imagine if it ran at a gazillion frames a second. And had some things ironed out. Like, is there even... <laughs> is there even anti-aliasing in this? I mean... Like, you can see, like, uh, sometimes you can see some of the edges just, like, not really clipping through other objects, but, like, you can see the gaps between, like, the joints of the polygons. If you look carefully. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I, I don't want to talk too much more about that because, like, I know it's never gonna happen. There's no point in me giving my getting my hopes up. Can't see game. <laughs> oh man. Hey, I'd be down for a Corridor 7 remaster. Uh, yeah, probably not, Mark. I mean... Probably not. I don't think it's that easy to just make a quick compilation disc of these modern games. Especially, like, we're, this is the 360, so... 
you know, it's pretty different hardware from, say, the Xbox One or PS4. Although it is possible they could do, a, like, a backwards compatible com compilation. But I... it's pretty unlikely they Namco would even touch this thing with a 10-foot pole. Yeah, yeah, the, that's the first boss on... on that. Yeah, Wanpaku Graffiti. I actually did a Let's Play of that last October. That was- that was pretty fun to go through, I like that. I mean, if they did do a re-release on this game, I think it would be wisest for them to just do, like, a PC version. I think, you know, that would probably be the way to go. And maybe port it to console later if it, uh... If it works out well enough, but, I yeah, it'll never happen, so... Oops, I pressed the wrong button again. God, why am I doing that? I never do that in this game. Well, you should definitely play a Red Dwarf. I mean, it's still relatively cheap. I mean, the 360 one especially is cheap. Uh, the PS3 version's a little more expensive, like, I think it's like 20 or $25. I don't know why, I guess maybe it's just, it might perform better, and so that's the... The PS3 one might be the ideal one to get. Jeez, there's a lot of them. I don't remember five. I remember a lot, but not five. Yeah, so one one thing that's fun about these guys is they always drop your heads. They always drop their heads when you do your instant kill on them. And their heads are extremely powerful. Unfortunately, it seems to be a one-time use kind of thing. Although I think there's a weapon upgrade I can do um, that'll make those more durable. I have to check my inventory. I'm gonna grade two of these guys at once. Yeah, weapons, so we got, yeah, weapon durability plus 25%, and then that's it. I don't know if that's going to actually uh, apply to the heads and things like that. I guess I should probably upgrade some of these. Oh, I can't. Never mind.
Ah, finally making progress. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, Red Dwarf. Is that uh, 360 or PS3? He goes, mmm, gooey. Just <laughs> like, man, this game, I tell you. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> oh, shit, it's locked. Okay. No, I'm, well, I mean, I would say get it for whatever system you have, but if you happen to have a PS3, I would say probably try want to try to get it for that. I, I've heard the performance is a little bit better, and I heard the load times aren't as long. And trust me, when you first play this game, you will experience those load times. <laughs> oh, you will experience those load times, all right. Yeah, so this part actually has a, a gimmick. So when you go into your crazy mode, you can actually see the symbols up there. And I think it actually basically tells you what you should hit. Yeah, so if you don't do that right, uh, you just have to constantly fight enemies until you get it right. So that that part can last a long time if you don't do it correctly. And it still doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I mean, I saw the emblems on the floor and I just tried using those, but... I don't know, there's so many different emblems in that room and you don't know which one is the correct one. But at least we didn't just spend a half an hour on that section. Saying that the fat PS3 is backwards compatible, right? Um, yeah, the original PS3 is backwards compatible with PS2 stuff. All PS3s are backwards compatible with PS1 games, though. 
So only select models work with PS2 games out of the box. But all models do PS1 games. Yeah, these guys are so annoying. Like, this is another questionable design choice. There's a couple of questionable design choices throughout this game um, when it comes to enemies. They just really slow down the pace of the game. We're up to 4,000, and I think I need 6,000 at a bare minimum. Oh, 5,000. Yeah. All right, finally. He's like, even when you hit them, you still get hurt. It's just like, ugh, come on, man. Alright, this part's kind of annoying. The controls change. You have to not fall to your death. Like that! Lots of these blue dudes. Shh. Oh, come on. Yeah, this is a bad time to... Uh, yeah, I don't have any... Any of my special... Power at the moment. That's gonna make this part really tough. You always want to have a little bit. Because when you get to a point like this, you need it. Where do we go now? I guess that way is the only way. I have a feeling we might be here a while. I don't remember these blue guys popping out like this. I remember them being here, but not grouped with five other enemies. Or four other enemies. Or 
is sinking. See, these blue guys, again, they can just chop your limbs off. And that's exactly what they do over and over again. And so you've got to take them out. But you also need to take the big guy out because he can make the other enemies invincible. So basically, it's just a pain in the ass. It's the worst kind of checkpoint system where you gotta <laughs> watch the freaking cutscenes over and over again. There we go. Ugh. <sighs> Alright, so now I'm pretty sure you can actually fall off to your death. And you can't do anything about that. If you if you fail the quick time event, you take damage. So another another really asinine design choice. Man, it's ten forty already too.
Yeah, well, this is the, the medium difficulty mode, Red Dwarf. You can put it on an easier difficulty and, and still go through the whole game. And honestly, that's how I recommend playing this the first time. Like, put it on the easiest difficulty mode. Normally, I don't do that, but for this game, I did. And I recommend other people do it, too. And then by the time you finish the game, you'll be comfortable enough with it to tackle it again, but on the, you know, normal difficulty. <laughs> yeah, and I was serious too, Red Dwarf. Definitely, definitely put it on the easiest difficulty. Because this game can be really frustrating, especially in the very beginning, when you don't have uh, your upgrades. When you don't have your upgrades and you're still trying to figure out what to do. Oops, I keep pressing the wrong button. My brain's not with it right now. You have to actually control Rick here as well. There's a lot of weird gameplay shifts as well throughout the course of this game. All right, we're just gonna go all out and berserk. Do you want to kill this squid thing?
Wow, it's not registering. I was up on the red guy and pressing B and it wasn't registering. So that was that was total bullshit. Try it again. Did it eat my inputs? No, it just wasn't. Like I was I was pressing the button and it just wasn't registering me doing the instant kill on the enemy like it was supposed to. We're dead again. Yep. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed that. <laughs> Can't we have October every month? You know, I, I wish I could do this every week, but man, it is... It's tough, actually. It's tough on me. Um, <clears throat> because I have uh, the dedicated Thursday night stream. Uh, I have a pinball stream on Twitch on Wednesday mornings, and then with this on Tuesdays, it's like half my week is gone. And, uh, you know, when I do this stream, I've gotten home from work, like, so I've, uh, I worked 10 hours last night, and then came home, and then prepped for this stream, so, it's, it's draining. Yeah, I wish I could do them all the time, but, uh... Well, there's some other factors as well, like if I keep streaming as frequently as I am during this month of October, then I think I'll end up losing people on my channel. Alright, can we just reset again? I don't even really feel like dealing with this anymore. Yeah, there's a whole, a whole bunch of different factors, but first and foremost, it's uh, it's tiring. That's That's the big thing. Dead. Oh, how did I get up there? Uh, my pinball streams are at 9 a.m. and they go until 12 a.m. It's on the uh, Buffalo Pinball Twitch channel. Buffalo is in like Buffalo, New York, since that's where they're from. Yeah, so on Wednesdays, I come home from a 10-hour shift at 7 a.m., and then I have to wait two hours, and then I start my stream, and then three hours later, I'm done, and it's... Yeah, so Tuesday and the Wednesday mornings, uh, those are long days for me. And so Monday into Tuesday this October for this YouTube stream, those are also long days for me as well. Like, I know I'm just sitting here playing video games, I mean, but... Uh, it's different playing video games when you want to versus when you're doing it 
for work, basically, and that's kind of what it is right now. It's like I should be relaxing right now, but but I, like I said, I really wanted to get some extra content out for October, but there was no way in hell I'd be able to do extra Let's Plays because it's been taking me so long to prepare for them lately. You know, I'm running out of easy Let's Plays to do, so every Let's Play now involves a lot of practice uh, in order to do them. I, I try to veer away from doing lazy Let's Plays like I used to a long time ago, where I just fire up some random game and do it. Um, I, I want to be well practiced and actually be able to get through the games on the on the let's plays. So normally I would just up the let's play count in October, but this year that wasn't going to happen. So I figured I would just up the live stream count. But still, I mean, it's it's time, it's uh, it's energy, it's after a long day of work. But uh, I hope you're enjoying it. I know Red Dwarf is enjoying it. So anyone else out there watching, either live now or in the archive, I hope you guys enjoy it. I've been saving, like, the great games, though, for the Thursday streams this month. So we did Devil May Cry this past Thursday. Uh, we're gonna do Castlevania Symphony of the Night one of these weeks on a Thursday. That night, I vowed that all men should suffer as I have suffered. Yeah, I've got a very full schedule right now. For sure. Um, it'll be easier once I'm done with the Buffalo stream, the Buffalo Pinball stream. Which, that'll be late January when I'm done with that stream. And that'll free up my Wednesdays. reunited. Yeah? Well, fuck you. No! Fuck you! <laughs> oh, great, these guys again. Getting close. I feel it. <sighs> the altar. The sacrificial altar is on the other side of the chapel. There we go. <laughs> yeah, the chat's usually way busier on Thursday. <laughs> mm. 
But yeah, part of it is also uh, the content. I mean, when I play modern games like this on stream, even if it's over at Twitch, I don't get as many people watching. Um, you know, people follow this channel for the retro stuff. And even though this is a retro remake, uh, it's still technically a modern game. And, uh, you know, so the time of day I'm streaming doesn't help. Um, and also the fact that it's a modern game doesn't help either. So. Phase 12, the devil made flesh. Um, but still, as long as you guys are enjoying it, that's all that matters. I knew the turnout wasn't going to be as high as, as uh, Thursday nights. Get your hands off my girls. <laughs> that looked like it hurt. We did it, didn't we? We stopped the ceremony. Is still in motion. Something's still trying to force its way through. It's too late, Rick. Sacrifice. One sacrifice isn't enough to open the gateway. Not one, not one thousand, but ten thousand sacrifices. And you, Rick, you have been the executioner. I want vengeance for an eternity of agony. I want the corrupted to know that it was me stopped him. To do that, I gotta let him out. Thanks, Red Dwarf. I'm glad you're digging the October uh, content so far. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how you like the uh, the live streams coming up in the next couple of weeks. I have a few different ones that I've been wanting to do for a while, but man, there's just so many good horror themed games that I uh, can cover. But there's only so many Thursdays to go around. Jenny, I'm coming. Let me go. Okay, so in this part, it's you basically just kill enemies over and over again. You gotta make sure that Jen doesn't get yes. killed. And that's that's it. There's no real final boss fight. It's just uh, another enemy rush. So we're just gonna sit up here and just kill dudes over and over again.
playing Doom 2 tonight. Hell yeah. That is a good way to celebrate October. <laughs> Oops. She's not even dead. What? The <laughs> this game is so dumb sometimes. <sighs> I got to do that whole section over again. That would have been the end of the game, by the way. But as usual, you know, the quick time event just comes out of nowhere. Um, no sound, no sound trigger, no nothing. It's just this little, little sprite on screen. Oh, look, the checkpoint's right here. Really? Jennifer. I mean, this really just should have been automatic. <laughs> it's just dumb. More quick time events to end the game. Aren't you guys glad we're going to end this game on a positive note? <laughs> God, this game is so dumb. <laughs> Stupid quick time events. God, what were they thinking? That heart has a face on it. And that's it. rise and fall when that payback finally comes around there's not a second of all that waiting that ain't been worth it hey, hey what do you think you're doing we got a deal remember let me go it's over our deal was to save Jen she's safe now you sure our deal's over Rico you checked on your girl lately what are you talking Lenora, my love, at last, you've come back to me. I'm here. Lenora, I've been waiting so long for you, my beloved. Jen, you okay? And that is Splatterhouse. <laughs> oh, man. Now, I'm going to have to just mute most of the audio, though, because this is pretty much a copywritten song. Sorry about that, guys. I'm surprised I didn't get a copyright claim on the music on um, the first episode, but I have a feeling we might on this second one. There's more... Uh, more frequent sections where there wasn't anything going on, but there you can hear the music blaring in the background. There's, yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of licensed music in this game. So, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That is Splatterhouse. I'm actually, I'm kind of sad to have muted it because of uh, <laughs> I do like the ending theme, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, they pretty much set the game up with twist ending. And, you know, so there technically probably could have been a sequel. But this game did so poorly that uh, it probably wasn't even, on, you know, in the cards. <laughs> yeah, after all the effort, you still don't win. Yeah, pretty much, unfortunately. 
But I guess it kind of harkens back to the old Splatterhouse games. I mean, Splatterhouse 2 is technically, I guess, the only one that ends on a high note where you actually, Jen comes back to life. Uh, but in the first Splatterhouse, your girlfriend dies. And in the third Splatterhouse, the mask turns out to be the bad guy. And the game's so hard, chances are the rest of your family was dead in the process. <laughs> so yeah, this kind of harkens back to the third Splatterhouse in a way. The mask reveals at the end that all the killing you did was to bring back the corrupted and then it just wanted to kick the corrupted's ass. So lots of death and destruction for no, no necessary reason. Hey, Red Dwarf, don't, uh, don't try too hard, man. Sleep is, sleep is good for you. Trust me. <laughs> But uh, but if you pop in Thursday, it'll be good to see you. Yeah, no, there is there is multiple endings in the third one. There is a good ending, but the game is really really tough if you're playing the North American version in particular. So most people when they play Splatterhouse see uh, when they play Splatterhouse three, they see the bad endings. And that's just how that game goes. Uh, we might actually stream Splatterhouse 3 uh, in a couple of weeks. I'm not sure what day it's going to be because uh, Halloween's actually going to be the last Tuesday of October, which means I'll be streaming on Halloween morning. Oh, man. Alrighty, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, if you guys have any last-minute questions or comments or anything, I can stick around for a few minutes. We can... I can answer any questions you guys have or comments or... Or whatnot. But, uh, yeah, it's about 11 a.m. right now. This is usually about the time uh, I start winding down. Um... So, and I'll try to hit the bed in the next hour or so. Oh man, I yeah, I racked up another headache. I've I've got this like crick in my neck, and I I have a bad feeling that it could either it could either be a muscle spasm or like a pulled muscle, or it could be like maybe I've got like a disc in my neck starting to like rupture. Um, because it's it's been kind of like chronic pain for like the last two weeks, and. Uh, it usually leads to massive tension headaches, um, and I feel it coming on. I feel like a tension headache coming on. It's just my the entire stream, my my um, the rear side of my neck and uh, you know my upper shoulder area has just been very achy. So it'll be good to just sort of like kick back on the couch, relax for a little bit, and you know hopefully that that tension goes away. But I've had a sharp pain in the side of my, the right side of my neck, um, probably about halfway up between, you know, my chin and my my shoulder. So yeah, so it makes me makes me wonder. I don't have to look up like neck stretches. I know all sorts of back stretches from when I had back problems, but uh, I'm gonna need to find some neck stretches. And upper arm stretches, upper upper body stretches in general. Uh... But all right, guys. Well, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, as usual, I'm gonna go ahead and flash by the Patreon backers, like I always do at the end of these streams. So that's the current list of Patreon backers. Uh, thank you, folks, who are on that list for supporting this show and stream and channel monetarily. It's uh, much appreciated. And I'm going to flash by the old Super Chatters as well. And uh, so thank you guys for your continued support. Thank you guys for hanging out. Red Dwarf, Mark, Tyga, uh, Ronnie, and uh, Kurt Urbane and Gerald Miller. And Carl Jr. I'm guessing most of those guys aren't, aren't there anymore. But in case you are, thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out. Yeah, and I might need to get it checked out, Red Dwarf. 
We'll see. Money's tight. Money's tight, and my insurance sucks. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but alrighty, guys. You all have a good day. Uh, I'm sure for most of you, you've got the whole day ahead of you. Uh, Red Dwarf, thanks again. Uh, I guess it's getting somewhat late for you. It's not too late. You still got the rest of your day, too. And, uh, yeah. Take care, guys. Uh, I'll see you on Thursday. And um, remember, uh, new Let's Play next Sunday as well. It'll be Super Goals and Ghosts for Super Nintendo. So, and I think you guys will enjoy that one. So, all right, guys. Take care. Have a good one. And I'll see you soon.